Daily Fire episode 349, which Treadway sent me one of my tweets to go off of. We'll call this, uh, I feel like I was stuck. Three, two, one. If it's trash, turn it off. But if it has value, please share it out for me. Of course, it's brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com for all your supplement needs. Go to Max Effort Muscle. All right. Daily Fire episode 349. I felt like I was stuck. I'm going to read you all the tweet real quick. I felt like I was stuck in the trailer with no money, no opportunity, and no way out. I hated school. I didn't feel academic, academically smart. I can't even say academic. Uh, the only thing I like to do is what was everyone else's hobby. And I had never met anyone that had ever made a living from it. And I wrote in parentheses, that's my thoughts in 1997. So I remember sitting in my trailer as I'm a senior in high school thinking, okay, I'm terrible at school. You know, everyone's struggling around here. Um, there's no defined path. I only like to do literally like two things. One is lift weights. The other is play basketball. Basketball is not looking real promising for me. See, I didn't get recruited. And I just really felt, I mean, honestly, a little bit hopeless. And as I was reading things from Arnold and just like trying to find any material that I could, because there's no real internet right at that point. It's, I'm just reading muscle magazines and, you know, the old booklet series and all these things. And thank God for Columbus State because I didn't uh, get my financial aid in time for the University of Cincinnati, which was a blessing, so I didn't go into debt. But thank God for Columbus State and Don Labenthal because they had created, and in, in, in Dr. Tob Habiger, they had created a one-year exercise specialist program, which was literally perfect for me because it was inexpensive. I think it was about $4,000 maybe back then. It was a one-year certification where I could then be a personal trainer. And then also, I was hoping when I moved to Columbus, because I come up and visited Columbus State and thought, okay, I can live with my friends on campus. I can go to Columbus State. It's I can pay for it myself. I can pay for my room myself. I had saved the money from working in the coal mines. And I realized that, wait, this is this could really happen. Now, what I didn't know was, was this job actually possible? And it sounds funny because everyone's a, been a personal trainer now. There's personal trainers in every town. Even in the towns we grew up in, they have personal trainers that do well. But it just wasn't a normal job 25 years ago. Actually, I think people kind of thought I was fucking joking. Like, oh, you're going to do my hobby for a living? Like, it just didn't make a lot of sense around where I'm from. And so thinking that it was possible felt pretty fucking lonely. Now, when I got to Columbus and I realized there are people that make money doing this, I hadn't met anybody that made a lot of money doing it. But then when I met Reggie Young and I was doing the math in my head and watched the way he trained people and I was like, folding towels at the desk and just kind of, you know, being a bystander, I saw that he was probably making around a hundred thousand a year. And Don shout out down Don Labenthal again, he had kind of said Reggie had put together a real business. So when you start talking six figures, you start talking, uh, this is the way you operate. You're, you're kind of, you're paying rent almost like a barbershop or in your own business. Then it started to become more of a reality for me, um, that it was possible. And that's about like 19, 20 years old. And so it's wild how by me moving away, saving my money, working really hard, having a defined goal of get out of there and get an opportunity to try, just to try. But I had a very, very back, back, very, very back to um, Arnold's new book, Be Useful, like clear vision of what it looked like. Work a million hours underground, save every dime, lift weights, move to Columbus, try this fictitious job. That I don't know anyone else that has after I get this one year degree and get to fucking work and then understand would somebody actually pay my young ass fucking 20 or 30 bucks an hour to train them. And to me, that was like uh, unbelievable. Right. And so as I'm on that process of uncovering possibilities and believing that it's real, it's just like, I really think I was the only one that really understood it or believed it. And so because I had that experience and because it actually worked, 
that is how I look at almost everything. Even though the support now is completely different, it's obvious that it's worked. But the reality is I still take that initial vibe on, I don't need anyone else to believe it. I, I really just don't. And because I was truly the only one that believed it back then, I can still be truly the only one that believes it now. And I would argue that you have to be the only one that believes it. Now, my mom wasn't telling me I couldn't be successful. My friends weren't telling me I couldn't be successful. No one was telling me I was fucking crazy. They just didn't know any better. They weren't really hindering it, but they didn't know. And so there wasn't a lot of like, I guess, external support. But I guess my point is you really shouldn't need that. Because if you fucking believe and you get up every day and you put forth that effort and then you over deliver and you, you go the extra mile and you try to constantly learn and you keep that vision in your mind, things start to attract your way. Um, it's not on some secret shit that you just think about it and it shows up. You have to fucking work for it. And it never comes in the time frame that you want. But Daily Fire episode 349 is really just a reflection of I really thought I was stuck. But if I would have actually all the way believed it, that I was stuck, that that was the hand I was dealt, that this is my just what I'm meant to do, then I'd still be there. But I didn't. I believed that something was different for me, that there was a path that I could blaze, that there was a clear vision in front of me, and that I believed that I could really do it because I was willing to put the work in. And so just there's a lot of people out here that probably feel stuck, but just know you're not. You're not because, uh, back to what Ed Milet had said, your one decision, your one email, your one relationship, your one tweet, your one direct message, your one idea away from maybe completely fucking changing your life. All right. Uh, Daily Fire episode 349.